Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another post-game show here on the YouTube Hockey Writers YouTube channel. I'm your host, Matthew Zator, and uh, joined in by Jim Parsons and Mariah Stark. As in the last few games, the uh, post-game show here, uh, Calgary Flames, Edmonton Oilers, Battle of Alberta. Another crazy game for the books. I mean, you know, it started off uh, 3 nothing. Edmonton lead uh, on first goal, 26 seconds in, and uh, Markstrom on a bad giveaway behind his net. And... Uh, I'm mean, was off and running three, nothing at the end of the first period. Uh, Nugent Hopkins opened the scoring on that uh, mistake by Markstrom. Hyman scored, Kane scored. And then, um, you know, we thought it was going to run away with it, but uh, Calgary came back in the second period. Uh, Jim, I'll start with you on uh, the game. what do you think about this crazy game in the latest <laughs> craziness of the battle of Alberta? <laughs> That's what I think. My head has exploded. With, I was just saying to you guys, I don't know what else can happen in this series that hasn't already happened. This has been by far the most entertaining series in the entire Stanley Cup playoffs this year. Maybe yeah. in a long time. Oh. I don't remember a playoff series that's been anything like this. And you and Mariah said something else will happen. Now that I've mentioned that something <laughs> else will happen, but there's no way I can predict it. If I had to put like all these NHL bets things, the advertising and promotion oh. that they're doing for all this if you would have placed a bet on what else could happen in the series, you would be rich by the time you were yeah. done. This is, just, this is insane. Like it's just in crazy. And I know that you said they were off and running, but I remember saying it out loud to my wife when we were watching this game, I said, this isn't over. It's three, nothing. Yeah. Like there's no way this game is done. In fact, I actually thought Calgary outplayed Edmonton for most of this game, right? Like mm -hmm. they outshot them in the first, they had most of the possession time in the game. Uh, Edmonton just capitalized on the mistakes. Like the first Markstrom goal, that yeah. was just an error. Right, which we've seen Mike Smith make a number of times, and yeah. we'll talk about the area made later. But <laughs> like, just yeah, this was just a crazy game that you knew was not going to be over. And I'm just really grateful, and Oilers fans are probably super grateful, oh, this did not slip away from them because it really looked yeah. like it could have. And it was a massive swing. Like this is three one or two two, and if it's two two on the way that that game could have ended, I don't know that Edmonton wins the series. To be totally honest with you, like mm -hmm. that that had the ability to change the entire face of the series and uh it was a crazy game it was just a crazy game <laughs> yeah there's nothing more to say on the on the craziness this series has been and the for this game is just the latest one um mariah on calgary i mean like jim said they outplayed the, the oilers a lot in the second period uh, they looked more like the flames of the regular season they you know it'd be you know puck possession they had chances markstrom looked really good again uh, you know making a gloves a couple glove saves um, in that period that he looked really calm and collected. Uh, what would you think about Calgary's game and um, how Markstrom kind of settled down uh, once the second period started? It was exciting. Like the first period, I was like, oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> and then in the second, when they got that power play, I was like, okay, you guys, they looked good. They were passing and they weren't doing too much passing. They're actually trying to shoot. And I was like, okay, if you guys can score here, we can get going and make a game of it and they did and that it was that goal was really good um and they just got the momentum back and they were playing really strong and like you said Markstrom was amazing some of those saves I was like he looks like he did during the regular season this is a good thing yeah. he's playing strong he's confident um his defense was actually playing they were forcing Edmonton more away from him and not letting yeah. him get in as close as they were and I noticed that made quite the difference. I mean, McDavid and Kane are always going to be dangerous, but the farther away you can keep them, the better. Yeah. And it seemed like they focused more on that too. And I mean, that ga that's the game I expect. How do I word this? Expected to be with scoring. I expected it to be a lot closer. Obviously Kane, I think it was Kane got the empty netter at the end, but the one yeah. goal game is what I've been expecting this whole series. Not this crazy up and down and everything, <laughs> but yeah, it was intense and it was fun to watch. Yeah, no, it was really good. And uh, Speed, you spoke of the defense. Uh, Chris Tanner made his return to the lineup. Um, clearly not 100%. I mean, he wasn't battling as hard as I, I usually see him. Um, but he made a difference. He had Shillington played a lot better. Um, and we know how, or I know how Tanner, because everyone knows how Tanner makes his partner better. Um, he's really good with Quinn Hughes. He's made Shillington a better defenseman. And uh, Tanev kind of settled stuff down, it seemed like. And, um, you know, Jim, what would you think about, you know, Tanev's return to the lineup? He, I, won't, I won't say that he was the reason why McDavid didn't look as dangerous in this game, but 
they did make adjustments. They were saying during the, you know, during the game that they had more players around him, so he couldn't get into the middle of the ice. So what'd you think of how they dealt with McDavid in this game? Well, you are right. McDavid was relatively quiet compared to what he's done in the past. He was still dangerous, but he did not get, he didn't run the show like he's been running yeah. the show in the last few games. And I don't know if that's Chris Tanev or just the ability that, or the confidence that Tanev gives the other guys around him. Cause yeah. Tanev looked like he was struggling today for me, especially in the first period, like on that power play goal by Zach Hyman, he just lost the battle. Yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't outstrength them. And if I'm Edmonton, I'm pushing right at Tanev all the time. Cause they weren't shying away from it. He almost played 20 minutes tonight, like 1924 yeah. yeah. or something. Right. So they clearly weren't uh, keeping him out of the lineup, even though he's not hundred percent. So, uh, but he did have an impact whether or not he was personally, stopping the play or he was just helping other guys get their game together. Like we said, Shillington played much better tonight. So uh, I think it makes a difference. Do I think McDavid will be quiet? Like he was relatively tonight next game. No, I think no. he'll figure it out. That's what McDavid <laughs> does. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what Calgary's hoping. They're, <laughs> Calgary can hope. Right. That, that they're hoping like a zone defense will kind of quiet him down. Right. But McDavid will figure it out. Like that's just the way that he operates. If this is not yeah. working for me, I'll do something else. And he's always going to be dangerous. And I don't think, I don't know there's many times that you can keep him to one point a game. Like it just, yeah. I don't know what he had tonight, but it clearly wasn't his normal self. He's still good. So it was helpful that other guys picked it up, but I thought Tanov was good. Uh, and I think he yeah. made a difference for Calgary. I think their overall defensive game was a little bit sharper tonight. Yeah. And the thing is about the Oilers this year, from what I've, this different to me is that McDavid and dry they get their points, but in the playoffs here, it's been other guys doing it too. Like today, again, Zach, Zach Hyman scored again. Uh, you know, Nugent Hopkins came and scored a couple goals at uh, the opening and the game winner. And then you got Kane in there as well. So I think, you know, their depth is a lot more prominent in these playoffs than in the past. So I think that's a big difference um, in their game this year. So, yeah, Nugent, I mean, Nugent Hopkins was huge tonight. Like McDavid yeah, ended up, end up with two assists, but that was maybe the best game that Nugent Hopkins has played in the playoffs. He's been useful and effective and penalty killing and good five on five and stuff. But this was the first time that he's really showed up in this in any series, and yeah. you noticed him offensively. Got the first and the last goal. He was really good tonight. Heard his yeah. name a lot. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's again the depth that the Oilers do have a bit more of a, of this year. Um, compared to the previous years. So um, we'll see if that continues. That's done so, so far. I mean, Kane's got 12 goals in the playoffs. I believe that leads the way. So, I mean, it's, it's been pretty great, pretty huge of how, how much he's produced. Um, now let's talk about the, <laughs> the thing that could have potentially changed this series and turned it on its head is Mike Smith's gaff that, um, Anderson scored from, I would say, probably just inside his blue line. And he didn't, he, it seemed like he was blaming someone on, on, the, yeah. on the goal. What'd you think about that, uh, that goal, Jim, on that one? Well, I, I'm not sure where he was. It's some sort of outer <laughs> space. Like he might have been waiting for tickets to the new Buzz Lightyear movie or something. Like, I'm not sure exactly what was happening. But yeah, he's, it was, he just wasn't ready. And I don't know. It's even hard to blame him because he wasn't like yeah. out of position. He was in his crease. He was, he just had no idea the shot was coming. He had no expectation yeah. that I don't know if he threw his hands up because he was looking for somebody to blame <laughs> or he was just like, what the hell was that? Like, I don't <laughs> think he had a clue what just happened. Right. He was just so shocked at the whole play unfolding. I know people are going to razz him like crazy because how do you yeah. let that in? But it was just a very weird. I've never seen anything like it. Like I know other yeah. people have scored from far away, but I don't remember anything like that. Like it was just so strange. And then to, again, later in the game, <laughs> just a couple minutes later, sort of zone out when he's standing in his own crease and the puck comes around the boards and hits the back of the net and he's not ready. You're like, where is he? What planet is he on right now? Like, I don't, that's the thing about Mike Smith is he can be so good. And then he can do stuff like that. And he's done it repeatedly in the playoffs. In the first game against LA, he coughed one up the middle and they scored and they end up losing the game because of it in the first game against Calgary, let in three goals in six minutes. Like he just has this ability to just kind of go somewhere else completely. And then yeah. in the same game, he can come right and zone back in and like, it never happened. It's the yeah. weirdest thing. <laughs> it's just amazing to me. And it had that game slip because of it. I, I was saying to you guys, I think Calgary wins the series. If, if yeah. Calgary ends up winning that game because of that mistake, 
I think that's a that's a, a crumbler for the Oilers. Oh, yeah. So it was really, really good that they were able to get that last goal and kind of bail him out. Yeah. I mean, Nugent Hopkins, <laughs> Smith has got to buy him dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I wonder what they're saying in the locker room after that game. Like, who's – nobody says anything. It's just like, okay, awkward. Let's just not bring it up. Or if, like, <laughs> somebody happens. has to – like, if Mike Smith says something and apologize to everybody or they all say something to him, be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I don't know what gets said in the locker room after a yeah. game like that. I'm sure in the media scrums they'll talk about it. But I don't know what Jeez. you say after that. <laughs> Well, I mean, he Oops. just had to match Markstrom's uh, one. Uh, Mariah, I mean, we talk a little bit, but, uh, you know, Smith can do, can settle. Markstrom seemed to settle down from that. He could have unraveled um, after that, too. And all the other goals weren't really his fault. And they were talking in intermission. You throw Vladar in. Would you have thrown Vladar in uh, into the second period after he allowed those three again? Mm, that's a hard <laughs> one. I would say no, just because, I mean, he's he's a strong goalie and he just has to find that confidence. And like we said, a lot of those goals weren't necessarily his fault. His defense, I mean, obviously he's the last line of defense, so he should be stopping some of those. But it's so hard to blame the goalie unless it's something <laughs> like Smith did. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I just feel like if you pull him – his confidence is going to go way down. And if you want to use him again in game, what are we on five going to be on five now? Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to be the same. And I mean, it's, yeah. and it's kind of unfair to Vladar. I'm sorry if I say that yeah. wrong because you're expecting him to be the hero of the game. And it's, that's a lot of pressure to put on him if he yeah. hasn't played a lot either. I think they sticking with Marstrom was good. And it obviously proved to be a good choice. I mean, they lost in the end, but, they came back and almost yeah. won. So yeah, I think you stick yeah. with them. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Markstrom's been your guy all year, and uh, he did bounce back. He like those two saves I mentioned. Uh, those that were huge to get him settled down through the and settled the flames down. It seemed as well because they started playing their game. So, um, Jim, looking ahead to next game, what do you think the Oilers? I mean, they lost. They did blow a three goal lead. I mean, that's they had a great start. Um, didn't have a very good second period. What do they need to do to close this series out in game five? I don't think they can play as though they're trying not to lose. If that makes any sense, right? When you're up three, one in a series and all you have to do is not lose three in a row. The mentality might be, okay, well, let's just not lose this game. Like yeah. you, you don't want to go in with that mentality because I think you will. If you do that against Calgary, they'll beat you. But if you go in and you play your system and you play what has been working for you and you, you run hard and you push hard and you get a good start again. And you do all the things that have been working against the last two games in LA and these three games against Calgary. Uh, you need to close the series out. You need to go, okay, yeah. we're going into Calgary. Our expectation is to win here. Our expectation is to push. We are not going to sit back and just try not to lose this game. Uh, because if you let them creep back in three, two, it's pretty easy to win another one. Yeah. Like, you don't want to do that. So I think the Oilers got to go in and go, we're planning on winning this game and we're planning on taking it to Calgary, figure out what went wrong tonight and just go hard. And if you can go yeah. hard, I think you can close it out. Yeah. And that, and that's the thing. They did have a lot of good, good things. And we all know three, one series leads are a lot, a lot easier to come back than if you're down three zip and it's been done a lot more. So, I mean, you can draw upon different, different things. And a lot of some of those guys in the locker room, I believe have gone through that and come back from three, one deficits. Um, so you, you never know. And I, yeah. And like you said, I think that that's the biggest thing you got to go in and, and play to win, not just play to say, you know, if we lose, we still have a chance. That's it, never it's really easy good, to get stuck into the mentality that you could, <laughs> We shouldn't lose three in a row. That's what they're probably yeah. saying, right? You don't want to get sucked into that. You don't want to get into that mentality where you're like, well, we probably won't lose three in a row. No, like <laughs> you need to go in there going, we're going to win. Like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's our plan to close this out, not to not lose three in a row. I mean, even though the odds are in your favor, when you think that way, you probably will make this closer than it needs to be. So they just need yeah. to have the right mentality going in. That's right. And uh, looking at Calgary side, Mariah, I mean, they have to win <laughs> three in a row now and uh you know they've done it multiple times during the regular season they had a lot of uh, quite a few long winning streaks they've done it before they can draw upon some positives from this game to go into game five 
um, and they're at home. So what do they need to do to kind of, you know, at least win the first one because they can't look so far ahead because that's just daunting. But what do, what do you think they need to do? Yeah, they can't think about three in a row. They just got to focus game one at a time. Get through one game, one a period at a time. Yeah. And just get your game, play like you did this third period, this even the second period. Get shots on the net. Throw them from anywhere at this point. <laughs> you might get lucky and catch them off guard. And now that I know you said he might forget about it, but that could be in the very back of his head too. So it could throw them yeah. off. Throw, yeah. Just throw the shots and uh, <laughs> keep um, keep playing the defense the way they did. Keep Kane and McDavid as far away from the net as you possibly can, if that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's extremely difficult to keep McDavid and Kane as proven off the scoreboard. But if you can keep them to one or two, as long as you get more than that, you're okay. <laughs> um they yeah. did pretty well staying out of the penalty i think their penalties were less this game i didn't keep yeah. as close an eye on that but yeah just i would say just throw shots and go go all in you've got yeah. nothing i mean you lose your done so you might as well throw it yeah. all at them <laughs> yeah and, that, and that's the thing i mean the the flames they lose they're over it's over and uh one of the biggest i think one of the biggest seasons um in regular season at least uh will go for not so We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I do remember a long shot goal just from Canucks, but that's the first one that came was Dan Clute allowing a goal from center ice. And that turned a whole series around. And that's what I was saying. If, if Calgary ends up winning this, I, I, I do agree, Jim, that's, you know, the series changes and it did for that series. The Canucks lost that lost four. In, yeah. It would have been, it would have been four in a row. They lost four in a row to lose that series in six. And, uh, so uh, he, he, those goals can be deflating and, it, you know, it's great that Nugent Hopkins kind of saved that from happening because uh, you never know what could have happened after that. Yeah. Mike Smith's interesting. He's an interesting yeah. dude. Like <laughs> he's got this ability to do this and then he's got this ability when he's challenged and he looks bad to come right out and have the best game he's at. So yeah, I don't know which Mike Smith's are going to show up in game five. <laughs> so we'll see. It's going to, it's going to be interesting. We'll see what other, uh, the surprises they have in store for us this series because it's definitely not predictable. I mean, you, you never know what's going to happen. So that's what's fun. That's what's fun to watch us and um, probably nerve wracking for both sides too because you don't know what's going to happen. So um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just see what happens and uh, have fun watching. <laughs> I put a, I'll insane. put a buck on a one nothing. So it's going to be a shutout, <laughs> shutout, and then a the last goal in the third period. I'll put a dollar on that one. Well, we haven't have had that recording too. Yeah, that's, we yeah, haven't the, had the, that yet. So. The odds would be <laughs> outrageous. I would be rich. <laughs> well, well, it hasn't happened yet. We said that's we've seen saying. everything in this series. We haven't had a one nothing game. We haven't had an overtime yet. So we still have that to to hope maybe look forward to because I thought this one was going to go to overtime. So. I did too. Yeah, I was actually thinking it was three minutes left. I'm like, this is going to overtime. I don't know how long like, this is going to be. We're going to have a late post game show. <laughs> I was yeah. like, how late am I going to be up? <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, a goaltender's duel. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't had that yet. Both goalies have allowed uh, quite a few goals. Well, Smith didn't allow too much last game, but. Um, yeah, so we'll see what we're going to be talking about in the next post game show here at the YouTube on YouTube uh, Hockey Writers here uh, for Matthew Zator, Jim Parsons, Mariah Stark. This has been another post game show. We'll see you next time.